Hey, this is Nicholas. In this video, we're talking about paired herbs or Dwei Yao and how we can use these herb pairs to better understand single herbs, herbal formulas, and formula modifications. So Dwei Yao, the character Dwei means couple or pair, and the character Yao means herb or medicine. So Dwei Yao just means paired herbs. And this refers to a simple combination of two herbs that has a specific therapeutic effect. So why do we need to know this? Well, if we want to construct a formula from scratch, a Dwei Yao pair is a good place to start. Just like with acupuncture, we might start with a point pair that fits our treatment principle and then build our point prescription around that. Well, with an herbal formula, we might start with a Dwei Yao pair as our main ingredient and then add in supporting herbs to act as assistants and envoys. Or we can use these paired herbs as formula modifications. So we might start with an existing formula and then add a Dwei Yao pair to take that formula in a slightly different direction. Or if you're not creating your own formulas, but you're studying herbs, Dwei Yao pairs are a good stepping stone between individual herbs and herbal formulas. So if you understand Dwei Yao pairs, that can help you understand the functions of single herbs. And if you understand Dwei Yao pairs, that can help you understand the formulas in which they appear. And because each Dwei Yao pair tends to pop up in multiple formulas, knowing these combinations can actually make your studying easier and more efficient. And then there's also the fact that this is just something that comes up on boards and licensing tests. So it's just kind of something you have to know. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the more common Dwei Yao pairs. If you want to follow along, I have a handout you can download. The link is in the description below. We're going to start with some of the more simple ones, but I think the really interesting ones comes up more towards the end. So I'll put some time codes in the description below as well, if you want to jump around. So let's get started. The simplest type of Dwei Yao pair is when you take two herbs that do pretty much the same thing and you put them together. We could say that these fall under the category of mutual accentuation in terms of combination theory. A lot of these herbs come from the same category. In fact, we usually study them one right after the other when we go through single herbs. For example, in the category herbs that invigorate blood, we learned Tao Ren and Hong Hua right next to each other. Both of these herbs invigorate blood, so we can put them together to invigorate blood. If we wanted to compare them, we could say that Hong Hua is a flower, so it's light and ascending and especially useful for blood stagnation in the upper body. Whereas Tao Ren is a seed, so it's heavy and descending and better for blood stagnation in the lower body. So when you put them together, we can treat blood stagnation anywhere in the body. So we see this combination pop up in a lot of our blood stagnation formulas like Tao Hong Su Wu Tong, Shui Fu Ju Yu Tong, Tong Chao Huo Shui Tong, Shen Tong Ju Yu Tong, and so on. Another example like this, Long Wu and Mu Li both belong to the category substances that anchor, settle, and calm the spirit. So we can use them together to anchor, settle, and calm the spirit. Like in the formulas Hui Zhe Jiao Long Wu Mu Li Tong, Gui Zhe Gan Sao Long Wu Mu Li Tong, or Chai Hu Jia Long Wu Mu Li Tong. It turns out Zhong Zhong Jing wasn't very creative with naming his formulas. In the category Cool Acrid Herbs That Release the Exterior, we learned Song Ye and Ju Hua. Both of these herbs expel wind heat, and they both have an action of brightening the eyes. So we use them together to treat wind heat invasion, especially when it's early stage wind heat, and especially when there are eye problems, like in the formula Song Ju Yin. Similarly, in the heat toxicity category, we learn Jin Yin Hua and Lian Zhao. Both of these herbs clear heat toxicity, especially for sore throat, and they both have a secondary action of releasing the exterior. So we use them together for an external attack of wind heat, especially when there's sore throat, like in the formula Yin Chao San. And this combination also shows up in other formulas or formula modifications when there's externally contracted heat or heat toxicity related skin rashes and sores. So if you have an early stage wind heat attack and the main symptoms are cough and eye problems, you can go to Song Ye and Ju Hua. If you have a more severe wind heat attack and the main complaint is sore throat, you can go to Jin Yin Hua and Lian Chao. Then just remember that Jin Yin Hua and Lian Chao can also be used for other types of heat as well. Back to the category herbs that invigorate blood, we also learned E Ju and San Lung right next to each other. Both of these herbs invigorate blood, but their specialty is breaking up clumps, breaking up accumulations, and treating abdominal masses. So San Lung is slightly better at treating blood stasis, 
whereas Uju is slightly better at breaking up qi stagnation. So we can use them together for qi and blood stagnation, especially when the stagnation is causing accumulations or palpable abdominal masses. And this includes things like enlarged liver or enlarged spleen. And because both of these herbs are so strongly moving and they break up clumps, they're both contraindicated during pregnancy or with heavy menses. And right after that, in the same category, we learned Ru Xiang and Mo Yao, frankincense and myrrh. Both of these herbs invigorate blood, but their specialty is promoting flesh regeneration. Again, we could say that Ru Xiang acts more on the qi and Mo Yao acts more on the blood, but it's really common to see these two herbs together, especially in external applications treating injury and trauma, because they both regenerate flesh. And then in the category herbs that warm the interior, we learned Futsa and Ganjang, aconite and ginger. Both of these herbs warm the interior, and they both have an ability to rescue devastated yang. So we use them together for situations of yang collapse, as in the formula Sini Tang, or we can use them together because they both warm the middle jiao in formulas like Fu Zi Li Zhong Wan. Da Huang and Mang Xiao are both in the purgative category. Now this combination is a little more interesting because even though Da Huang and Mang Xiao both purge the large intestine, they go about it in slightly different ways. Mang Xiao is a salt, so it draws water into the large intestine to soften the hard dry stool, and then Da Huang promotes movement to push the stool out. So these two herbs really complement each other, and we see this combination come up in a lot of our purgative formulas. And then we have Chai Hu and Sheng Ma. Both of these herbs belong to the category cool, acrid, release the exterior, but this combination isn't about releasing the exterior. Both of these herbs have a strong upward action to raise the clear yang, counter prolapse, and treat sinking conditions. So this is for things like uterine prolapse, rectal prolapse, diarrhea, or even like a bearing down sensation with vaginal discharge. So there's the saying that Chai Hu lifts from the left while Sheng Ma lifts from the right. And this is referring to how Chai Hu enters the Shaoyang channels and raises the liver gallbladder, while Sheng Ma enters the Yang Ming channels and raises more the spleen and stomach. So we can put them together and they lift up everything. But in order for this to work, we have to combine it with tonifying herbs because in order to raise the qi, there has to be enough qi there to be raised. So we'll see these two herbs in formulas like Bu Zhang Yi Qi Tong and similar formulas where they're being combined with spleen qi tonics to raise the qi and counter prolapse. And then we have some other pretty straightforward ones like in the tonify yin category. First we have Mai Men Dong and Tian Men Dong, both of these tonify yin. But Mai Men Dong is more about lung and stomach yin, whereas Tian Men Dong is more about lung and kidney yin. So we use this pair a lot for dryness, dry mouth, thirst, dry cough, or even coughing up blood. Both of these herbs have dong in the name, so we can refer to this pair more simply as our dong or the two dongs, which I think is kind of funny, but I'm also pretty immature. Further down, we have Nujenza and Mohan Lian. Now these ones are more about liver and kidney yin. They both tonify yin to treat vision problems and premature graying of hair, and we see them together in the formula Arjurwan, two solstice pill, because they both tonify yin. And still in the same category, we have Guiban and Bie Jia. These are two different types of turtle shells. Guiban is the plastron or ventral shell of a freshwater turtle. Bie Jia is the carapace or dorsal shell of a soft shell turtle. Who knew you could learn so much about turtle anatomy studying Chinese medicine? So both of these shells tonify yin, treating things like steaming bone disorder, and they're both heavy shells, so they're able to anchor yang. Back to the warm acrid herbs that release the exterior category, Song Artsa and Qin Yi Hua both open the nose. And in the drain fire category, Shi Gao and Jermu both clear heat and drain fire. So we use them together for qi level heat or yang ming channel heat, like in the formula Bai Hu Tong, white tiger decoction. So that was a lot, but hopefully it's pretty straightforward because we're just taking two herbs from the same category with similar functions and using them together for that function. Along these same lines, it turns out we have herbs that belong to completely different categories, but we still use them together because they have similar functions. For example, Jermu and Huang Bai. Now Jermu belongs to the category herbs that drain fire, and Huang Bai belongs to the category herbs that clear heat and dry dampness. 
but it turns out that they both have a function of clearing deficiency heat. So we'll see this pair pop up in formulas for treating kidney yin deficiency with fire flaring upwards, such as Jirbai Di Huang Wan or Da Bu Yan Wan. Gochitsa and Ju Hua are in different categories. Gochitsa is in the tonify blood category, and Ju Hua is in the cool acrid release the exterior category. But they both have this function of brightening the eyes. So we can use this pair alone as a T for things like dry eyes, blurred vision, or floaters in the vision, or we can use it as part of a formula like Qi Ju Di Huang Wan. Du Huo and Qiang Huo both treat B syndrome. Du Huo is in that category, herbs that expel wind dampness, but Qiang Huo is in the category, warm acrid herbs that release the exterior. Du Huo is better for B syndrome in the lower body, but Qiang Huo is better for B syndrome in the upper body. So we can put them together and we can treat B syndrome anywhere in the body. So this Dui Yao pair shows up in our formulas for B syndrome, like Zhuan Bi Tong. And both of these herbs also have an action of releasing the exterior. So we can use them in cases of an exterior wind cold attack when there's also a component of dampness, like in the formula Qiang Huo Sheng Shi Tong. So hopefully this combination is easy to remember because they both have Huo in the name. Sometimes we just say R Huo. Again, R means two. And that's referring to Du Huo plus Qiang Huo. And another one we can briefly mention is Buguzhi plus Rodoko. Buguzhi is in the Tonify Yang category, and this one stands out in that category because not only does it enter the kidney channel, but it also enters the spleen channel. So Buguzhi, Tonify Spleen and Kidney Yang to treat diarrhea. Rodoko is in the Stabilize and Bind category. It warns the middle jowl, and it also binds the large intestine to stop diarrhea. So we can use these herbs together to treat diarrhea due to yang deficiency. And remember, this is daybreak diarrhea, or early morning diarrhea, or coxcrow diarrhea. So it's kind of like Buguzhi is tonifying yang to treat the root cause, while Rodoko is inducing astringency to treat the branch symptoms of diarrhea. Now, I'm not sure that this combination comes up anywhere except for the formula Si Shen Wan, but I feel like this is an important formula that a lot of people forget about, so I thought it'd be good to mention it here. So with these herb pairs that we just talked about, again, they come from different categories, but we're using them together because they have similar functions. So hopefully this is all pretty straightforward. But where things get more interesting, I think, is when we take two herbs with completely different functions and use them together to treat a certain pattern or have a certain therapeutic effect. We call this strategy mutual enhancement when we take two herbs with different actions and use them together. So we might take a hot herb and combine it with a cold herb, or a tonifying herb and combine it with a draining herb, or an herb that works on the exterior and combine it with an herb that works on the interior. And this, I think, gets more to the essence of Chinese medicine. Fundamentally, TCM is all about balancing yin and yang, or creating harmony from opposites. So we can see this play out in these herbal pairs. For example, let's take a look at the herbs Chai Hu and Huang Qin. Now Chai Hu is in the category cool acrid herbs that release the exterior, and Huang Qin is in the category herbs that clear heat and dry dampness. So together, these two herbs are used to treat Shao Yang syndrome. So remember when we talked about the six levels of the Shanghan Lun, the Shaoyang stage is considered a half interior, half exterior pattern. And that's why one of the main symptoms is alternating fever and chills. It's like the pathogen has one foot in the door, but the other foot is still on the exterior, so it alternates between the two. So this combination is interesting because Chai Hu is an acrid dispersing herb that moves upward and outward and releases the exterior, but Huang Qin is a bitter draining herb that downbears turbidity. So when we say Xiaoyang disorder is half interior, half exterior, it's like Chai Hu is working on the half exterior portion of Xiaoyang disorder, and Huang Qin is working on the half interior portion of Xiaoyang disorder. And that's how these two herbs work together. And so that's why with Xiaoyang disorder, our treatment principle is to harmonize the Xiaoyang. In Chinese medicine, when you use this word harmonize, that usually means we're trying to balance out two opposites, like heat and cold, excess and deficiency, rising and sinking, or in this case, interior and exterior. 
So this one I think is a really interesting combination, and we'll see it in pretty much all of the formulas that deal with Xiaoyang disorder. Xiao Chai Hu Tong, Da Chai Hu Tong, Chai Hu Gui Zhi Tong, Chai Hu Jiao Longgu Mu Li Tong, and all those other modifications. Kind of along the same lines, we can look at Gui Zhi and Bai Xiao. Gui Zhi is in the category Warm Acrid Herbs That Release the Exterior, and Bai Xiao is in the category Herbs That Tonify Blood. So this pair is used together for Tai Yang Deficiency Syndrome. Remember, Tai Yang Deficiency is characterized by simultaneous fever and chills, and the presence of sweating. The idea here is, because there's a deficiency, the interstices are unsound and the sweat leaks out. But it does so in a way that's insufficient to expel the pathogen. And this is called a disharmony of the yin and the wei. So again, here we have a play of opposites. Guajer is a warm, acrid, dispersing herb that releases the exterior and scatters pathogenic influences, whereas Bai Shao is a cool, bitter, sour herb that nourishes and holds things in. So together, these two herbs harmonize the yin and the wei. Guajer is the more yang herb. It's warm and disperses the pathogen at the wei level. Bai Shao is the more yin herb. It nourishes, constrains, and protects at the yin level. Or to be more straightforward, Guajer disperses, Bai Shao tonifies. Guajer promotes sweating to expel the pathogen. Bai Shao is astringent to stop the sweat that's leaking out. So this combination comes up in a wide array of formulas for a wide range of symptoms. The Shang Han Lun has like 20 variations of Guajer Tong. We can also say that Guajer warms the middle and Bai Shao relaxes spasms. And that's part of the reason we see it in the formula Xiao Jian Zhong Tang. And we see it show up in the formula Dang Gui Si Ni Tang because Bai Shao is nourishing blood and Guajer warms the channels. So this pair is doing several things at once, but the underlying pattern in all of these is a disharmony of the yin and the wei. Next, we can look at Chai Hu and Bai Shao. So these are two herbs that we just looked at, but here the application is completely different. It doesn't really have anything to do with an exterior attack. Rather, with this combination, both of these herbs enter the liver channel, and we can use this pair to treat depressed liver qi or liver qi stagnation. There's a saying in Chinese medicine, the liver is yin in form, but yang in function. So what does this mean? Well, when we say the liver is yin in form, the liver is, of course, a yin organ. But besides that, the liver has this function of storing blood, which is a very yin thing to do. When we say that the liver is yang in function, we're referring to its function of governing free coursing, or creating movement. So storing blood is the yin function, and creating movement is the yang function. And it turns out that this pair addresses both of those aspects. Chai Hu is acrid in flavor, so it moves and disperses. Bai Shao is in the category herbs that tonify blood, so it nourishes liver blood, and it also has this action of softening and relaxing the liver. One way to think about it, remember, in terms of the five phases, the liver corresponds to the wood phase. But here, when we say wood, we don't necessarily mean like a stick or a piece of lumber. The character Mu also means tree. So just like the branches of a tree spread upward and outward, that's also the action of the liver. Then you can also think that if a tree is not properly nourished, if it gets dried out, then its branches become stiff, rigid, and inflexible. But if the tree is properly nourished and it has enough moisture, then the branches are soft, flexible, and able to move freely in the wind. And this is how it is with the liver. When the liver is not properly nourished, it gets dried out and becomes hard and rigid and inflexible. But when the liver is nourished with blood and yin, it becomes soft and flexible, and it's able to perform its function of free coursing. So Bai Shao nourishes and softens the liver, and Chai Hu uses its acrid flavor to move qi and disperse stagnation. So we'll see this pair come up a lot in our formulas for liver qi stagnation, like Si Ni San, Chai Hu Shu Gan San, and Xiao Yao San. Next, we have Bai Ju and Fu Ling. Bai Ju tonifies spleen qi, and Fu Ling drains dampness. So we're combining a tonifying herb with a draining herb. And this is really convenient because spleen qi deficiency often leads to dampness, 
and dampness can encumber the spleen, leading to spleen chi deficiency. So it's kind of like a vicious cycle or a chicken and egg situation. So here we have an herb pair taking care of both aspects of this pattern simultaneously. Now to be fair, it turns out that both of these herbs actually do both of these things. Baiju majorly tonifies qi, but it also has a bitterness that dries dampness. And fuling is bland, so it promotes urination to drain dampness, but it also has a sweetness that tonifies spleen qi. But overall, I think we can say that baiju is more for tonifying spleen qi, that's why it's in the category herbs that tonify qi, and fuling is more of a draining herb, and that's why it's in the category herbs that drain dampness. So we see this combination in a lot of our formulas that tonify the spleen. It's in Sujun Zetong, Four Gentlemen Decoction, and then a lot of the formulas that are related to it, like Liu Jun Zetong, Gui Pi Tong, Shenling Bai Ju San, and so on. Next, we have an interesting combination, Zhe Ban Cha plus Chen Pi. Ban Cha is in the category Transform Cold Phlegm, and Chen Pi is in the category Herbs That Regulate Qi. So together, this pair transforms phlegm. So there's a saying in Chinese medicine, the spleen is a source of phlegm, and the lung is the container of phlegm. So it's interesting to note that both of these herbs enter both the spleen and lung channels, so we're able to treat the phlegm from its source and from where it's currently residing in the lung. But then there's another saying in Chinese medicine, to treat phlegm, one must first treat the qi. So the idea here is, if the qi's not moving, then the fluids aren't moving, and once the fluid stagnates, then they can easily congeal into phlegm. So that's why we see Chen Pi here. Ban Cha transforms the phlegm directly, and Chen Pi moves the qi so the fluids can get moving, and we can get rid of the source of the phlegm. If we wanted to take it a step further, we could add a third herb, Fu Ling. Like we said, Fu Ling drains dampness, but it also tonifies the spleen. So now we're dealing with the phlegm on three levels. Ban Cha transforms the phlegm, Chen Pi moves the qi, and Fu Ling tonifies the spleen so that it can perform its function of movement and transformation. And this is basically the formula R Chen Tong. So this forms the basis for pretty much all of our phlegm formulas. R Chen Tong, Liu Jun Zi Tong, Qing Qi Hua Tan Tong, even Wen Dan Tong. And we can maybe also point out that both of these herbs have a downward direction, treating nausea and vomiting. So when phlegm damp obstructs the middle, the qi will rebel upwards. So Ban Cha and Chen Pi transform the phlegm damp and also redirect the qi back downwards. And let's do a couple more that maybe aren't quite so common, but still might be interesting to look at. Here we have Da Huang and Fu Zi. Da Huang is a cold bitter herb that purges the large intestine, whereas Fu Zi is a hot acrid herb that warms the interior. So here we're combining a hot herb with a cold herb. So this combination is for constipation due to cold. Basically, Da Huang is taking care of the constipation, and Fu Zi treats the cold. So this comes up in formulas like Da Huang Fu Zi Tang. Again, Zhang Zhang Jing wasn't very creative with his formula names. And a few other formulas. But basically, we're purging accumulation and warming the yang at the same time. Another combination of hot and cold is Wu Ju Yu and Huang Lian. Now a simple way to look at this combination is Wu Ju Yu is a hot acrid herb that's especially good for treating vomiting. That's why we say Wu Ju Yu stop vomiting. Huang Lian is a cold bitter herb that enters the middle jiao. So this combination is for vomiting due to heat. Wu Ju Yu takes care of the vomiting and Huang Lian takes care of the heat. So technically, we could get into some discussions about how this was traditionally used for liver fire attacking the stomach because Wu Ju Yu also moves liver qi and Huang Lian clears heart heat and by draining the heart, you can drain the liver since fire is the child of wood. Or we could say that this combination treats complex conditions where there's a combination of heat and cold in the body and you can adjust the dosages of each ingredient based on the relative amounts of each. But really, I think it's easiest to just say that Wu Ju Yu treats vomiting and Huang Lian treats heat. So this is good for vomiting due to heat. And this is the formula Zuo Jin Wan, or left metal pill. Now, I'm not sure that this comes up a lot, but I do think it's an interesting combination of hot and cold. And finally, we'll say something briefly about Huang Qi and Fang Feng. Huang Qi is a tonifying herb that 
tonifies lung qi, strengthens the exterior, strengthens the wei qi, and stops sweating. Fong Feng is in the warm, acrid, release the exterior category, and its name literally means guard against wind or protect from wind. So this combination strengthens the exterior and prevents external attacks. So this is another example of simultaneously tonifying and dispersing. This pair mainly comes up in the formula Yi Ping Feng San, or Jade Windscreen Powder. This is a formula for people with weak lung qi who have spontaneous sweating and a tendency to catch colds easily. The thing is, even though we say that Fong Feng is there to disperse pathogens and release the exterior, we really only use this formula to prevent external attacks. Most people would agree that this formula would be inappropriate to use during an external attack. Strengthening the exterior while the pathogen is still in the body would be like closing the door when the thief is still in the house. So that's it for Dwei Yao pairs. Now this isn't by any means a complete list of every Dwei Yao. If you look at Philippe Swano's book, Dwei Yao, there are a lot more there. Or if you look at H.P. Kim, he has a long list of Dwei Yao pairs. I just wanted to pick out some that are more interesting and more common to show up in formulas. So I'd encourage you to go through and look at this as you study your formulas. When you look at a formula, you can look at the list of ingredients and see if you can pick out any of these pairs. That will help you understand the applications of the formula, and it will also reinforce your understanding of the individual herbs. And like I said, I have a handout or a cheat sheet you can download. The link is in the description below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you find this content valuable and want to support the channel, consider joining the Patreon. That's just a way you can help out and keep this content free, ad-free, and available to everyone. But I hope you enjoyed this one because that's all for today. Thanks and see you next time.